In this lesson, we'll continue the process of refining our forest creature concept by focusing on additional visual details. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in the previous lesson, we were at a point where we're really happy with the placement and implementation of all of these different textures, and we started basically just making adjustments to our entire concept as a whole. So we made a merged copy, duplicated it, and we really just focused on our values, kind of tweaking our highlights, midtones, and shadows, just kind of going overall the entire piece here. And we basically just used our dodge and burn tool, just kind of covering some of these different areas where we wanted to either push our shadows a little bit further or our highlights. And then we also use the clone stamp tool in a few areas just to kind of adjust some overall forms of the textures that we used. We can actually make a quick comparison by, the, by just checking and unchecking the visibility of our refine layer. So in between lessons, I kind of continued on just kind of going overall, just kind of tweaking some different areas where I felt like I could use more of a highlight or a stronger shadow. So what we want to do now is go ahead and make a new layer, and we're going to start focusing on just some smaller additional little visual details and I'm gonna start by focusing on adding some additional texture just kind of in some areas that I feel like maybe could use a little bit more some of these some of these shadowed areas kind of like right here where we kinda of painted in those silhouettes of hanging moss and some of these shadowed areas right here where we have these pieces of bark just kinda of poking out so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my healing brush tool all right, and I'm going to make sure up in my control panel it's set to all layers. So just right here where you have some different layer options. Okay. And I'm just going to right click and size up my brush here in this little dialog box for our healing brush tool. And, and of course, making sure we're still on that new layer that we created. All right. So let's go ahead and kind of come over here. And I may want to sample just from this area right here, we're going to work in some additional bark. Now what's great about the healing brush tool is it matches contrast and value. And we can kind of see that implemented as we start to work in some of that texture. Now that still feels a little bit strong, so we can always lower our op opacity down just a little bit. So a little bit more than halfway. So just kind of working in some little bit of additional texture. We are going to have some reflected light giving us just a little bit more detail. So again, that's kind of what we're focusing on in this lesson is just some additional visual details that we want to kind of refine even further. So I'm just kind of pulling from this texture that we already have laid in here and just kind of pulling some of that into those shadow areas. All right, so I'm liking how that's looking. We can also make kind of a quick comparison kind of as we go. Very nice. And I'm just going to kind of continue moving on around here. We may want to pull a little bit more texture into that shadow of the cheek. And again, we can see the difference between the healing brush tool and the clone stamp. The clone stamp basically directly copies what we have, whereas the healing brush tool sets that texture into a given area and it matches the contrast and value as we weave that texture in. And I may want to grab my eraser tool if I feel like that's a little too strong in some areas, so just kind of lightly hitting it right there. So even with a lowered opacity, I may still want to use my eraser tool. So again, just kind of bringing in a little bit more detail into some of these darker areas. And again, periodically, you just want to zoom out and kind of analyze overall how it's looking. Let's kind of focus on these silhouetted areas where we got kind of this hanging moss. We used, again, that custom brush to kind of help us get that nice silhouette using that custom leaf brush. 
So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to sample from some of this information up in here and kind of work some of that into that silhouette. And just kind of zooming out there as I do this as well. This way it doesn't feel entirely flat. We have a little bit of dimension in there, a little bit of depth. And again, we can kind of touch it with our eraser tool just slightly. Let's go ahead and kind of focus on this opposing side over here. Again, just kind of pulling some of that texture that we used for the moss into some of that those hanging areas of moss right in there. Okay, cool. So I'm liking how that's looking. Let's go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to switch to my brush tool. I'm just going to use a hard round brush. I'm going to jump over here to my brush panel and turn on transfer and shape dynamics. Okay, so I want to paint in just some finer little strands of moss here and there. And I'm just going to come up here to the top and just kind of sample. Let's decrease our size of our brush tip considerably. That feels about right. So again, just kind of sampling, and I just kind of want to start to pull up some of these little hairs. some of these little individual pieces or strands of moss from that fine moss. So at this point we're just kind of doing a little bit of additional painting. That way we don't just have such a hard edge like we had before. We might decrease our brush size a little bit more. I'm just kind of coming around over here on this side. Just bringing up some additional little bitty faint hairs of moss. And what I'd like to do is kind of come over here and really start to work that in on some of these different areas over here where we have the moss kind of coming down into his little goatee bearded beard of moss almost like he has kind of like some faint stubble might zoom in just a little bit more So really in creating a concept like this, again, I want to reiterate that the textures, they're not going to do every single thing for you. It's really how you weave them in, whether you're using blend modes or just getting in there and combining a little bit of painting. So that's kind of what I'm doing now, just kind of painting some additional little visual elements to start to weave a lot of these textures that we've blocked in. Let's go ahead and kind of come over here and sample and again just kind of working in some additional little strands in any areas where we feel like the moss is a, just a little bit hard, hard edged. So in some of these areas down here, we're just kind of varying up the edges a little bit. Okay, cool. So I'm kind of liking how that's looking. We may jump over here to his far right side. And again, just kind of more of the same thing. Just 
kind of focusing on those little edges, just little details at this point to kind of set some of these textured elements in just a little bit better. So again, it's kind of just stuff like this. It helps kind of start to weave some of these elements in together. So kind of coming here on the chin as well, just kind of thinking about, again, I, I imagine this, this moss as like his beard. So naturally, you would have some kind of stubble, I would think. Okay, cool. All right, let's go ahead and kind of change gears again. I, as I mentioned in the previous lesson, I really wanted to focus on this mouth. Um, the mouth is going to be um, a key focal point of our concept here. I mean, he's, he's definitely got a major facial expression going on just opening up that mouth. So I'd like to maybe add in some drool or some spit kind of hanging down. I think that would look really cool. So let's go ahead and just make another layer, all right? And I'm going to go ahead and just switch to white here. And we'll, again, do a hard round brush. This time I just want transfer. All right. So I'm just going to kind of faintly start to think about some drool coming down, just lightly applying some pressure. Kind of starting with these top teeth. So again, try to think about storytelling elements that you can bring into your concept that will really push the character. And so I think giving him some kind of drool would really help. And this kind of adds to just his overall kind of kind of aggressive nature. Go ahead and increase our brush tip size just a little bit more. I'm just kind of highlighting just some specific little areas. I don't want to get too carried away over with the overall intensity of the drool. I want it to be kind of subtle, slightly subtle. That's why I'm kind of starting off just very faint. It's like I want there to be a little bit of transparency to it all. We could even kind of hit some areas just with our eraser. Okay, awesome. I'm really liking how this is looking. Again, let's go ahead and just make some quick comparisons, just see what all we've done just in the past couple of lessons. We've made quite the change. So I think we're at a point now where we'd really like to start blocking in some color. So that's what we're going to focus on in the next lesson. In between lessons, I'll kind of continue uh, making some final little refinements, just kind of painting in some a few little additional elements um, and maybe adjusting some uh, c textures in some of these darker areas as I see fit. But we'll see you in the next lesson where we start blocking in color on this entire grayscale image of our fantasy um, forest creature concept. So stick around and we'll see you then.